In this video, we are going to learn a new AWS service called as Elastic Beanstalk. Before we go into the details of this service, first understand the problem it is trying to solve. So let's say you have to deploy a web application. And normally a web application will contain the application code which you want to deploy on an EC2 instance. This application code will provide some kind of a functionality. Let's say whatever orders that you are whatever orders you are giving on your web application or on your website, this application code will process those orders. So to run this application code, you will need a EC2 instance. Once this is set up, then you will need some kind of a database to store the information about your customers or about your orders. And let's say if your application is used by thousands of customers, then a single EC2 instance is not sufficient to handle all of the incoming requests. So you will need to create multiple EC2 instances. These multiple EC2 instances can be created via auto scaling group. And if you have to distribute the load between those multiple instances, then you will need some kind of a load balancer. Okay. So just to deploy a standard web application, these are the minimum components which are required. And if you have to perform this activity, then one approach is to individually create all of these resources. So I will go into RDS and then I will create a database. I will use the I will go into the EC2 dashboard and create a EC2 instance. I will then have to log SSH into this EC2 instance and deploy my application. Once that is done, then I will have to go into the load balancer page and create a load balancer, create a target group. In that target group, I need to register my EC2 instances. Okay. So this is a cumbersome process to manually perform each and every activity separately. So is there any workaround or a different way to achieve the same thing? So that's where Elastic Beanstalk service comes into picture where using this single service, you can deploy these multiple resources from a single dashboard. Now let's perform a hands-on activity for this service. So open your AWS account. And in the search bar, click on the search bar, search for EC2. Okay. So let's open the EC2 service. Before we can use Elastic Beanstalk, we need to perform few preparatory steps. The first step is to create a SSH key pair. This key pair is used to SSH into your EC2 instance. So let's create or uh, click on this create key pair, give it a name EC2 key and select these options RSA and PPK and let's create a key pair. Once you create a key pair, a file will be downloaded on your system. So this was the first step. The second step is to create a security group. A security group applies to a EC2 instance. And using the security group, you can define which ports are allowed on your EC2 instance. So I will give this group a name, allow all traffic, because since this is a learning video, we will allow all of the traffic. Allow all. Select your VPC. Then we will create an inbound rule, say add rule. We will say all traffic. We shouldn't be doing this on a production environment, but since we are doing a learning course, so we will just allow all the traffic and rule and then let's create a security group.
once we have created the security group let's create a iam role in the search bar type iam and click on this iam service so what we want to do is we want to allow our ec2 instance to connect to a rds database and for that to happen we need to give permissions so we will create a role click on role click on create role and we want to say that aws service which is ec2 we want this ec2 to allow access to an rds instance so we will select rds over here yeah. again select ec2 here and say next so what we are doing over here is we are allowing ec2 to access the rds service click on next and then search for rds in the policy in the permission policies we want to give full access to rds scroll down click next give this role a name ec2 rds access Roll down, say create role. So now we have created a role for EC2 to access the RDS service. Now, so these let's create the application using the Elastic Beanstalk. So let's type Elastic Beanstalk here. And open the service. We will create an application. So, when we create an application in Beanstalk, then it will automatically configure an environment. Since we are deploying a web application, we will select web server as the environment. We will give the application a name, let's say test app. We will then select the platform on which we want to run our application. Since this is a Spring Boot application, so we will select Java. Then we will have to select which version of Java. So we will select Java 8, which is Amazon's Corito 8 running on Amazon Linux 2. We will then deploy or push our application code using this option. The application code is already present on my local machine. So I will say local file and I will select that file that I want to upload. So you can find the link of this file in the description part of the video. So select this jar file and upload it give this a version so i will say version 1.0 so this jar file will be running on a ec2 instance so we will say single instance which is free tier eligible so we will select this option and click on next now we will have to configure a few service related options so we will say create a new service role which will select this role then we will select the ec2 key that we have created we will also select the iam role that we have created earlier click on next now we will select the vpc on which we want to run our ec2 instance we will select the default vpc we will give a public ip address to our instance and we will select at least two subnets for our application. So I will say US East 1A and US East 1B. Now for our application, we will need a database. So we will enable the database. By default, it uses MySQL as the database engine. So I will keep that option. I will give a username and password for my database the password is just password p a s s w o r d 
don't change the username and password then select the subnet in which the database will be created so i will say 1a and 1b then i will keep these default options and move to the next page now we will on this page we will keep we will select the security group so we have already created the security group i will select this one so for this exercise we are going to use the auto scaling group so i will say instead of a single instance i will use a load balancer so i will select load balanced from here then i will keep the default options here you will see that there are scaling triggers right the matrix on which you want to scale your ec2 instance so, but i will keep the default options over here my load balancer will be created in these two subnets so no changes over here i want a application load balancer no changes over here i want a listener listening on port 80 and i will keep the default options and click on the next button so on this page we will mostly keep the default options related to monitoring but we will scroll down to the end of the page and we will configure a few environment variables so mostly we will need two environment variables the first environment variable is the port on which we want to run our application so i will say server underscore port and i will give the port number as 5000 then another property will be the details of the database url since the rds instance will be created by elastic beanstalk there is no way for ec2 to know what is this url so what elastic beanstalk does it it creates an environment variable called as RDS host name and the name of the database is injected into this variable. So select the name here and then I will select the value from here. One more point to notice that here you will see the option as create a database if not exist and we have set it to true which means that the database test will not be present and it will be automatically created. I will select this. So that's all and we will move on to the next page. So this is the last screen where we are just going to review what we have uh, provided till now and you just have to scroll down and click on the submit button. Once we do a submit, it will at least take 10 minutes for the application to be deployed. So we will wait for some time and resume. We have given sufficient time for the Elastic Beanstalk to create the resources. So if you look at the events tab now, you will see what activity Elastic Beanstalk has performed. So if we start from the beginning, then it is creating an environment. Then if I go to the first page, then it will scroll down. We will see that it has created a security group. It has created a target group for my load balancer. It has created a RDS with this particular name, created a load balancer, created a listener for the load balancer, created a EC2 instance, created an auto scaling group and other resources required for the deployment to work correctly and finally you will see a message saying successfully launch the environment so it means that now our application is ready let's verify the same so what we will do is we will click on this link on this particular section it will open in a new tab and if everything is configured correctly then you will see a 200 ok message on this url so from our application perspective what we will do is we will verify whether our application is working correctly by triggering a api call so the api that is provided by our application is api slash v1 slash employees this is a get 
REST API call. If I press enter, then I will see a empty response over here because there is no data in the database. So let's quickly make a post REST call and add the data in our database. So for making the post call, you will need a REST client. So I will search for a online REST API call tool. I have just searched for online REST API call. I will take this first application. This application will help us in making API calls. Okay. So we will copy the URL that we have. We will paste this URL here and we will okay, let's copy this URL. Let's paste this URL over here. We want to make a post call so that we can insert data into our database. So I will say post. Okay. And I will provide the data in a particular format. So I will say the first name of my employee is test. The last name of the employee is again test. And the email ID of the employee is something. Okay. So this is the structure in which we need to pass the data. Do we need to follow the same structure? Yes, because the Spring Boot application is expecting the data in this particular format. If you give anything else, then it is not going to work. Okay. Then I will just click on this send button. And if everything is provided correctly, then you will see a success response over here. So we got status 200, which means that it was successful and you got an ID of one. Right. So now let's quickly may go back to our previous screen and query the list of employees. So I will just press enter again over here. So now previously the list was empty. Now we have got one resource present in this list. And this is the information that we provided via the post API call. So by this exercise, what we have verified it is that the application is deployed and work. now the last thing we should do is we should ensure that we clean up the resources that we have created. So go back to your applications tab. Select your application and click on actions and say delete application. So provide the name of your application, say delete. Now this will ensure that all the resources which were created by Elastic Beanstalk will be deleted automatically.